Okay, we're back here inside the queue for an exciting wrap-up of the Enterprise Activity OpenStack Enterprise Forum. OE Forum is the hashtag. Go to crowdchat.net slash OE Forum and in pitch me. I'm John Bird, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by co-host Dave Velazzi, co-founder of Bitcoin.org, and our next guest, saving the best for last, uh, Chris Kemp, founder of Nebula and OpenStack, former CTO of NASA, making a dent in the universe by democratizing cloud computing. That's his Twitter bio right now, as of today. Chris, welcome inside the house, inside the view. Appreciate you coming back. Two days in a row, we had Cole on yesterday. <laughs> I think it's great to be here. <laughs> we had all the luminaries. It's funny, Dave, you've been around OpenStack. the business cover so long, you meet everybody when they were, when we knew them when, okay? So now that they're all famous, uh, you know, Chris and Cole, uh, big journey for you. I mean, come on, first let's get, how do you feel right now? Enterprise is hot, packed house, Twitter's on fire, yeah, it's crowd great. chat's going it, crazy. It's great to see hundreds of people show up for an event uh, that's just focused on enterprise cloud, you know, and just a couple of companies here. You know, I, I can remember a couple years ago, we had a room full of 15 or 20 people at the first OpenStack meeting, and you know, uh, now we have thousands of people that gather around the world to, to participate in the community, so it's just incredible to see how, how fast it's grown. What is the deal with Enterprise Cloud? We were just at the Open Compute Summit earlier yesterday yeah. covering it this morning. We didn't have the cube there today, but you know, you have this homebrew computer club mentality right yeah. now. Inflection point, massive sea change, transformation, growth market, bubble, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It's massive investment, great action. Yeah. But what's the, what's the big aha? Why Enterprise Cloud? Why is it so freaking hot right now? Well, I think uh, enterprises are realizing that they have uh, some uh, big challenges in IT, and uh, if you know if it's an insurance company that's trying to figure out how they can collect all that data from cars uh, to figure out how to price premiums uh, or to better understand their customers, it's uh, advertising companies that are trying to understand how to take all the, the click streams from the internet. Um, you know, every place you look, financial services companies trying to do a better job of understanding markets. Uh, you have to build massive scale-out computing infrastructure, and I think uh, Tim O'Reilly actually said it best uh, when he when he uh, did our company launch video, he said, you know, just a few years ago, no one would have imagined that a company would need a Google scale compute infrastructure. Now everybody's building them. So you've got projects like Open Compute that are democratizing the hardware and OpenStack democratizing the software stack. And obviously there'll be companies like Nebula that help deliver some of this technology uh, to the enterprise. I want to ask you a question because this has been my theme for the, for the week because I was really, um, I'm, I'm an older, one of the older guys, Dave and I are a little older. You know, I'm, I'm in the generation of the Mac guys, about 10 years younger than the guys who built the original Mac, and that was, you know, the computer science, that was, that's when we, we cut our teeth into coding, that kind of generation. It made me think about, those guys changed the world because they built stuff for themselves, yep. okay? If you look at the stuff going on now, what you're working on, people in this room, these are guys that are building it for themselves because they know that that resource that was elusive before, yep. that was controlled by the big guys, yep is now fully available, tax-free, right? Yep. So I want to get your perspective on that. Yep. The modern day version of what that homebrew club did for the computer revolution yep. is kind of going on, I would say cloud, whatever market you want to call it, but I'll just right. globalize it and say cloud computing yep. being representative, all the nuances of convergence yep. and mobile. What is that, what's that, what's that world like? You're in the center of it. Yeah, I mean, I think we're at the beginning of a new uh, generation in uh, computers. I, I think there was this uh, mentality that computers were these big, large-scale systems that were primarily focused on large business problems. The personal computer disrupted that, and you had companies like Apple and Microsoft uh, build these very small systems, which ended up uh, being incredibly successful, and that transformed enterprise computing. So if I'm building a large enterprise-scale computer, I'm going to start using the components that exist in the PC. What's happening now is that's happening all over again. We have uh, mobile phones and ARM processors and DRAM chips and uh, flash chips uh, that are coming and spilling over from these uh, consumer devices into enterprise platforms. And it allows us to rethink the way we do software. Let's not just run software on one big computer, let's run it on thousands or, or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of, of small computers. And I, and I think we're at the beginning of this revolution and it'll be a 25 year journey. 25 years from now, we'll still have software running. You know, I'll in be dead, you'll yeah. be like. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, but I, I think it, it'll be the new mainframe. I mean, all the software that's running today will be running you know, in, in a rack of VMware somewhere uh, 25 years from now. So it'll be exciting to see. So, so we're at the beginning. You're, in your view, we're like, this is tinkering around. Early days. We're wiring it together the infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah, early days, yeah. So when we first met, you told me, and I wonder if you could just you know, do the bumper sticker version of that story. Uh, you told me a great story about you know, really the roots uh, of OpenStack inside of NASA, yeah. how you're able to successfully you know, extract that from, yeah. 
from, from NASA, which is great. You know, we trash the U.S. government. So many great innovations come yeah, out of the U.S. Fantastic. government. It's unbelievable. So the short version of that story, and, and what led you to, to Nebula? Did you envision that you'd actually be doing Nebula? And, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I got this Still picture of a box. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm like, wow, that's uh, Chris's company. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, so when I was at NASA, we had a problem to solve. Um, we wanted to share NASA's vast treasure of knowledge with the American public. And if we looked at how we could do that, there's, there's not enough funding that you know, we could have ever gotten to do that. Right. And so by partnering with Google, I, looked, uh, I had a view into how you could manage very large scale computing infrastructures. We partnered with Microsoft and we had uh, another view on how you manage infrastructure at the time. And we ended up using these partnerships to build a very, uh, what we'll call a prototype um, of a very inexpensive scale out computing environment. We did it in shipping containers and the impact that that had was you don't want to have people managing servers in shipping containers because people don't like to work in shipping containers, right? And so it had the added effect of automating all the servers in that shipping container externally. And OpenStack really emerged out of that work. And um, you know, we've obviously seen it go, um, go uh, to incredible places since then. Okay, and then you made the comment, you, you, I tweeted out, you know, Chris's tongue-in-cheek comment was, uh, mark my words, someday that Amazon will be <laughs> integrating with the OpenStack a yeah. APIs. But, we, you know, we joke about it, but what, what's your position on that? You know, you know, we all know Randy Bias is very vocal uh, on that. We heard some, I, 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 you know, pretty couched opinions today on the, on the panel. Where, where do you stand on that? Oh, I won't be couched about it. I mean, I think that, uh, having OpenStack APIs allows this community to innovate. It allows uh, OpenStack to be something different uh, than Amazon. I also think that what Amazon is doing as a company with Amazon Web Services is they're uh, listening to customers and they're innovating. And I think it is a, a valid way to look at a segment of the market. I think it's looking at a segment of the market which is mostly small companies building new applications. And OpenStack um, is attempting to bring a lot of existing technology into the enterprise. And so I, I do think that it's fair to say that there's a different set of opportunities that exist when you bring a cloud into an enterprise. And uh, I don't think Amazon will see those things. And so I think having the OpenStack APIs be um, discrete and, and can innovate on an independent trajectory will create more innovation for private clouds and for, for competition, you know, frankly. So I do think both are important, uh, and that's not hedging. But I also think the Google Compute Engine APIs could be important um, as we start to see people do incredible things on that platform. And the market will decide. Do you yeah. feel like Amazon's ambitions for the for the enterprise are overly ambitious, and they're, uh, Amazon's being somewhat naive about the, the enterprise? Or, I mean, Amazon. We, we've talked to Andy Jassy, and yeah. and he's. Flat out, I'm going after that trillion dollar opportunity that yeah, is, is the enterprise. There is no workload, no situation yeah. that we will not pursue. Yeah. Very confident of that and putting a lot of resources behind it. Do you not buy that? Uh, you know, I think that um, when we talk about uh, making uh, large enterprises, uh, uh, giving them the power of a cloud platform, it isn't just about technology. It isn't just about uh, making sure you can plumb the network. Uh, those are important things to do. Uh, to make it possible, but what you're dealing with is you're dealing with a cultural transformation. You're dealing with a different uh, way of thinking about building software, and I think most importantly, you're dealing with a lot of existing applications that um, are just not going to run very well uh, in the kind of ideal cloud architecture that we see the Amazon-style cloud companies leveraging, and, and that's where the economic advantages of cloud are. You know, if you're not able to elastically scale up and down your infrastructure, you're not able to take advantage of the economic benefits of cloud. And frankly, a lot of applications, you know, I, I commented earlier, uh, what, I, what I think is brilliant about VMware strategy, and it's, it's, they're a very smart company and they have an incredible product, is they're virtualizing everything. They're virtualizing the network, they're virtualizing storage, they're virtualizing compute, and so they're creating an effect, and I'm a Star Trek fan here, but they're creating a, a holodeck for software. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And you put all your software in there, and it'll run like it's 1995 in the year 2025. Yeah. And you can change the hardware out, you know, a couple generations of hardware underneath it, and that's a good thing. Just like mainframes are still running. Software mainframe. Well, we, you know, we. <laughs> this is our fifth year of the cube. This is the beginning of our fifth, I guess, season. I'm going to call it. But in 2010 was our first kind of in, uh, initiation of the cube. We were at VMworld. Was our one of our first early shows. Maritz launched the stack, right? And that was the software mainframe. We all remember those days. A lot's changed since then. I mean, the vision. I mean, I was drinking the Kool-Aid. You know, past the peace pipe. I'll smoke that all day long. You know, beautiful. <laughs> However. 
the top of the stack just never evolved fast yeah. enough. So you saw some some end user computing, you know, yeah. kind of misfire multiple times. Now it's kind of coming home with mobile. So okay, matured. And then Moritz takes all that out of the pivot. Makes total sense on PowerPoint. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to ask you because you're also smart. You were also you know NASA and then with founding Nebula. Knowing what you know now, given some of the, the market conditions of, yep. of what's advanced faster than others, yep. if you can go back and do a mulligan um, <laughs> with Nebula, yeah. what would you what would you tweak a little bit? Because some things just didn't materialize fast enough. Some mm -hmm. were held by other factors. What would you do differently? Um, I mean, obviously, if you could go back in time and you could look at everything that's happened yeah. over the past few years, one thing I'll say is I'm you know I'm very optimistic uh, about the future. I'm optimistic about. Uh, I, I think there are visionary CIOs and CTOs at America's most successful companies that, that, that understand that the only way that they're going to be able to, to win uh, is to power their most critical applications on extremely inexpensive scaled infrastructure. And this makes so much sense to me, right, coming from NASA. But I find that there are a lot of companies out there that have CIOs um, that work for CFOs uh, that have big, big challenges, <laughs> right, to deal with, with yeah. their existing applications. And uh, they're, they're also optimistic about where they are in their journey of virtualizing all these applications. And I think many of them say, well, we've virtualized 80% or 100% of our applications. And I don't think that's, that's right. I think they've virtualized maybe 50 or 60% of their applications. And I think that's a good thing for VMware's market share. It'll continue to grow. But I think in the long term, um, when we, uh, we see the incredible advantages uh, that big financial companies or insurance companies or media and entertainment companies get when they can use something like OpenStack and Open Compute, and you know, Nebula is going to be a part of that. Um, I think that you're going to have winners emerge, so and, and it won't even different? be a fight. And so I would you do anything different going, knowing what you know now? I'd make it easier. Um, so, and, and I don't know if there's any way we could have done this differently, because we built, uh, we, you know, we, we have, frankly, what's been called an HP strategy. We built a system that could scale kind of big um, and kind of small, but not super small. Um, and not super big, right? And so then we can start there and then scale Fat middle. scale, scale <laughs> bigger, right? So I think uh, what we, you know, if I had to do it over again, uh, seeing what some companies have done with rebranding a, a, a small server and, and uh, selling that as a you know, data center in a box, uh, maybe making Nebula even less expensive and even easier and even simpler. Like we, we're so easy and so simple, but to just never underestimate uh, the power of simplicity. Mm. Okay, so, the, so I'm getting the hook there from yep. the, the folks here, but I want to ask you, okay, now let's look forward, because you're an yep. optimist, and I just want to get that, yep. on the, that question out there, because the market's changed. We, we had predicted some things would move faster, they didn't. Going forward now, you get the chessboard, you're, yep. you're looking at the chessboard of where we are now over the next 12, 24 months. There's going to be some sprints and some you know, straight and narrow, maybe some curves. You got to slow down a little bit. Where do you see the current landscape now mm -hmm. with Nebula vis-a-vis -vis the marketplace? Well, I mean, I think the key is to um, allow customers to um, more easily run applications. So what will happen here is this ecosystem will emerge. OpenStack already has a huge ecosystem around the infrastructure. What now needs to emerge is the ecosystem around uh, running things on infrastructure services. And so you're going to start to see every software company that's ever existed uh, solving every problem you can imagine re-architect on cloud architectures. Mm -hmm. And these applications will run on Nebula private clouds, they'll run on public clouds, and they'll run in both. And I think the really exciting thing for me is just watching uh, as a whole generation of software evolves to be um, completely dynamic and elastic. Uh, and uh, that I think will, will ultimately make this transition, that, that's where the knee and the curve will be when we start making it possible. Look, when you think about your first Mac or your first PC, what would you do with it if, if no software ran on it? If everything Boat that anchor. you ran, you had to write in HyperCard or, yeah, yeah, or right. Basic. Remember yeah, when yeah. Microsoft had yeah. you know, the Basic, yeah, sure. and yeah. Apple I had knew. HyperCard yeah, and that yeah. little, <laughs> right? So this is where we are with OpenStack. HyperCard was great, right? I loved HyperCard. What we have is we have Heat. Hyper, heat is the new HyperCard, right? Yeah. And we've got Chef and Puppet, and everybody has to do everything. Things will change when all the software that everybody runs in the enterprise runs on cloud. You and know, that's, you're, that's what's you're a Star Trek fan, I'll end with this quote <laughs> uh, from the founder, uh, um, uh, Skrenta from, uh, he's with the search engine, I'm blanking on, on the name, but he said, everything that was on Star Trek will be invented. Mm -hmm. And that's, you start, maybe the holodeck might be a little bit different. The warp drive's going to be tough yeah, as warp well. Warp drive will be hard, you know, <laughs> beam is through, you know, beaming <laughs> through warp drive. Uh, 
Uh, big Star Trek fan. Chris, thanks yeah. for coming on the Cube. Really appreciate your insight. And, and uh, again, your perspective is very relevant. Uh, you've been there at the beginning. You're seeing the, the trend. You're seeing the chessboard. Great market. Congratulations on your success. Appreciate you coming on the Cube. This is the Cube, our special exclusive coverage of open stack for the enterprise breaking out. OE Forum, that's the hashtag. Follow us on Twitter and crowdchat.net. We'll be back with a wrap up after this short break. <laughs>